Hey, welcome to the basement where theology meets the thoughts of life. We're back and we have a special guest and he is special. He, though he's been here, I don't know how many times now, Tim, but he's still special, bro. Thank still, you. Still my dude. <laughs> um, we're here on the basement where theology meets the thoughts of life. Uh, please go to our website at wrathandgrace.com where you can go and uh, there's a lot of resources there you can uh, check out. You can There's merchandise you can actually purchase books that we do have music and also ministries you can uh uh we also work with Vodi bakum we're actually having Vodi bakum come in january here in lancaster pa lancaster pa uh and so more information on that later but uh the radio network too you can also uh subscribe to our podcast audio on uh the radio network link on our website you can also check out the other uh podcasts wrath and grace radio Cross Examine and Resisting Bellum. They're podcasts that are also a part of our network. So make sure you go there and support. And also, Wrath and Grace provides printing. If you want shirts, uh, we can provide uh, prints and things like that for your businesses or for you know your co- Bible colleges, whatever, your churches. <clears throat> so go to wrathandgrace.com and make sure you support the website and the ministry that we do here on Wrath and Grace. If you want to go to our Facebook group page, facebook.com slash groups slash the basement. And the reason why that's important is because uh, we ask questions uh, before we actually go on live and we want to interact with your questions. We uh, want to bring them up and also answer or even include them into the discussion on our thread. And so one of the things we do here is that we comment on the comment section. We interact with you right here live on the basement and so make sure you let us know uh where you're from where you live and 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 that way we know what's going on here on the thread and wayne will post up some questions throughout our conversation and so i'm going to hand it over to my man wayne what's good what's going on everybody we are back in the basement as we said we brought somebody back Brother Tim Bertolette, back by popular demand, the professor. He is in the basement. What's going on? Hey, it's good to be here. <laughs> it's nice. I, I really did mean that uh, back by popular demand. Oh, I had thanks. a couple people that have been like, hey, when you going to have Tim back on? So I, I secretly send them cash. <laughs> and they, then they <laughs> call you up and that, that's how I get back on. That's what it is. And and I just hit him up. I said, hey, uh doing a christmas episode want to join us do you know about this you know about that? i've, I've heard of christmas yes yes, <laughs> yes. i, I, I do I, know a thing or two i've realized i think he could join us for any episode there hasn't been an episode yet where he wait was there yeah i'm sure there, there i think there, there was, was i think yeah. there was one i think we were dealing with some black people issues <laughs> 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 he was like nah i'm gonna sit that one yeah, out yeah <laughs> <laughs> but no i'll, I'll he, learn from you on he, that one. <laughs> actually i think i did listen to a bunch of that one it was yeah good. it's always good yeah well hey it's good to have you again yeah it's good to be here um by the way i did uh i guess you could wait happy festivus day yeah yeah <laughs> uh airing of grievances and feats of strength to follow um you you know that before today i didn't know what that meant and be before you oh, came, I, I pulled up that episode. You know Seinfeld, right? Yeah, he yeah. made me watch it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I, I will. You <laughs> youngins don't know these things. <laughs> it's it's amazing how far I'll go to understand a joke. <laughs> yeah, I had no I, I had no idea what you meant. I think you need to do an episode just on that. Well, air your grievances in the chat. Uh, Wayne and I will be doing feats of strength at the bottom of the hour. <laughs> That's, funny. That's funny, man. Yeah. So, hey, hey, what's going on, everybody, in the comment section? As always, we will be um, we'll be discussing a lot tonight. So go ahead and hit that like button. Go ahead and hit the share button and be in the comment section. We love to hear from you. We don't like just like to bring information to the table. We like to create discussion, um, create a space uh, where we can have interesting dialogue. And really. air your grievances if they're about <laughs> Wayne or, or yeah. Los, no, not me. <laughs> yeah, that too. That too. Nice, nice. Um, well, it's been what two days that we've been in the middle of the Great Conjunction and. I haven't seen a, 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 a superpower on me yet. I'm, I'm disappointed, <laughs> you know. 
The, so you the, do know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> you I got flying? the most melanin in here. And I, I haven't. Did I you haven't. try flying? Like. <laughs> yeah, I jump yeah. off the roof and find out. Two days now, I still don't have my my superpowers. All I see is a, a bunch of blank mans running around. <laughs> Now look, I watched Festivus, that Festivus episode. Now you got to watch Blank Man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. it's good to be back here in the basement. We got a lot to talk about tonight. This is um, this is an episode that a topic that I've been kind of avoiding. I'll get into why I've been avoiding it for the last couple of years. You don't like Christmas. Well, what present didn't you get as a child? They don't call me the black. <laughs> they don't call me the black Grinch for nothing. But <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we're going to be talking about a lot. Is it a pagan holiday? Why has it been celebrated throughout hol- uh, throughout history? What are some realities of the good news fulfilled in the incarnation of God's son? What about consumerism, materialism that we see during the Christmas season? Is Christmas season really a joy to the world? There's so yeah, much we only discussed. critique that after Christmas once <laughs> we have all the presents. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that, that That's very true. I'll uh, I'll make sure to donate to the human fund for you. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a that minute. That was funny. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny right there. Um but anyway, we're back uh here in the basement. It's it's it feels like it's been longer than a week. Yeah. It's only been what, 6 days? Something like that. Yeah. Anyway, we appreciate you guys joining us tonight as always. We got a great episode ahead. What is that plan? Uh Is that a new beat? Well, it's like some Christmas or something. Oh, I see what you're trying to do there. You guys have a different style of Christmas music. I'll tell you what. Yeah, (laughs) this is is jazzy. Tonight is ours. Episode 76, Joy to the World. I swear we're going to get to this, guys. (laughs) We're like 10 minutes in and I haven't said a thing yet. Anyway, we're going to lay the foundation for tonight's episode. Um, I'm thinking we should probably start with the historic reason for Christians celebrating Christmas. Um... Yeah, because this this has been one of those topics. Again, I've been I've been I've been a little bit hesitant towards dealing with only because growing up, we didn't really celebrate Christmas too much. And as I got older and even like becoming, you know, a Christian more and more like a mature Christian, I think I became immature in some of my thinking, some of my understanding of. Uh, my freedoms and, and liberties when, when it comes to being a Christian. Um, even look, getting to the point where, you know, looking at Christmas as having pagan roots. Uh, this is the information age. So I looked into a lot of different things. And on my search of, of studying this stuff, I have concluded that I think it's the other way around. I think that the pagans have stole from christianity when it comes to this time of the year yeah so i mean the the and i dealt with this too as in a past when i was in the pastorate now most people just celebrate christmas and go on with their day and don't worry about it but every now and then you would get somebody uh somebody new to the church somebody walking in they've read some things on on um uh the internet or or whatever they've they've quote unquote done their research and uh you know and and frankly some of these people um some of the ones that I encountered had had a chip on their shoulder about Christmas and, and some other things. And uh, now not everybody that, that has convictions about not celebrating falls into this trap. But but the ones that I tended to encounter, you know, it could get pretty contentious pretty quick. And, and they, you know, pretty close to like you're almost heresy or, or you're deluded by these pagan ideas. And mm. uh, almost to the point of, of questioning how serious you were with the Lord because you celebrated Christmas. And, uh, you know, that, that's when I that's when I think it, it gets taken to an extreme. Uh, we are, you know, the challenge, obviously, is December 25th as, as the date of the Lord's birth is not in Scripture. So are, are you adding to Scripture? Are you adding to the authority? Are you are you making something more important than it than it should be? But but I think let's let's keep in mind whenever you celebrate, if you choose to celebrate, uh, it is important to remember that that the son of God became flesh and was born uh, into this world and and born of a woman and was truly God and truly man. And so I think there is a rightness to using this celebration to make sure we're confessing key central doctrines to Christianity. Now we don't need a holiday uh, Mm -hmm. to do that. And you will get into it, you know, it's commercialization in our day and age later, but, but let, let's keep in mind the, the well-meaning people who, 
who do do this for the right reasons and and whether or not you have issues with December 25th you know confessing regularly and celebrating that G- that God became flesh and and reading through the the narratives in Luke and Matthew particularly I think is just hugely in, important and I, I think if we weren't setting some time aside in our year particularly those of us in Protestantism that aren't aren't liturgical in our, in our church year I do think we'd be we'd be missing out on something a, a regular renewal and reminder of of these birth narratives of I've preached through the prophecies during the Christmas season sometimes going in the Old Testament uh, I think I probably did a little bit of Hebrews surprise surprise <laughs> <laughs> you know just with the, the incarnation right. passages John 1 yeah. 14 those, those kinds of things so you know let, let's not lose sight of the importance of knowing these truths and these doctrines before we start getting into the, the nitty gritty that's good yeah no absolutely um I, I call this section the old news because again it has been around long uh, for a long time um and in and, and the old news of dealing with christmas the christmas uh holiday is also dealing with the fake news of it which is people saying christianity or Christ, christmas has pagan roots and if you look into it there's so many so much information out there there's articles that i was reading and it's out there people have studied this stuff guys believe it or not people have studied and gotten to the bottom of it i think that it's fake news Christ, christmas does not have pagan roots they bring up the soul invictus uh being celebrated Did yeah which was which was the solar cult uh that that um you know depending how you, know, how you parse some of this there were there was the worship of sun in syria and egypt and it was also popular in rome and, and so they try to draw some connections there some of the more recent scholarship uh is showing those connections probably aren't the best there was the roman solar cult uh so so here's the bottom line let me just kind of back up a step and uh in the early uh you know the 1800s you started having a history of religions approach to scholarship so they were uh the naturalist was trying to show all kinds of connections between uh why we have certain traditions in christianity and the idea was if you could trace it back into other things in the ancient near east it, it kind of would delegitimize the the supernatural you know so you, you would trace the resurrection back into the osiris cult and these were these origins and and, and part of what happened is it became what, what one scholar later called parallelomania, where it was like you look for anything just remotely similar, like, oh, this ancient tradition references a flood. Well, that's where the Noah flood came from. And this mm-hmm. tradition represents a god who who dies. Well, that's where Christianity borrowed from. You know, and, it, you know, this this god ate this for breakfast, and this is where we get, you know, it just, it gets, it got utterly ridiculous where it was like a simple word, a simple phrase. They were starting to link concepts, and that's just not how language and culture and, and you know, genuine influence, cross-cultural influence uh, works. Uh, words tend to not function as code words, despite, you know, like this is where the Da Vinci code gets popular, like what, right? Like one code, one yeah. number, yeah. and it, and it goes across time and space and mythology and it blows uh, up. Right. And, and this, I mean, this is a basic history of religion approach and it was very popular late 1800s, early, early 1900s. Um, the problem is at the root of it, uh, not only does it have naturalistic presuppositions, but it's just, it's been shown to be bad scholarship. It's it it number one. It doesn't respect the individual sources and individually. Uh, number two, it tries to argue for cross pollination where a lot of times there isn't. That's not to say there isn't some in the ancient world because there clearly is, but it was it was overemphasizing and and it you know it, it had this idea of if you can find the common uh, myth or mythos, yeah. then you can connect all these different things. And, and so you kind of created the mythos at a higher level mm. and then drew connections onto the ground level of the history. And that's just not how you do, do history. Right. So, um, this is one of the things then the idea was, uh, we do know about a feast, uh, a soul invictus, the solar sun God in Rome, December 25th had a feast. The problem is the feast wasn't well known until like the the th- late 300s early 400s hmm. uh so so the the idea was so the basic thing in a nutshell was to say well these romans the pagan world they had this feast it was important to them so christianity appropriated the feast and they decided to celebrate instead of the birth of the sun god or something like that they decided to celebrate uh, the birth of, of Jesus. And, and so it was like a way of co-opting the tradition 
to make it uh, more uh, palatable, make Christianity more palatable palatable oh you do this already we'll just come over here and do our feast and then say it's jesus and and not the soul invictus and and so the uh, this was their idea like that's how christianity spread in the roman empire by by co-opting these traditions and stuff that's not to say that some of that didn't happen in in the ancient world uh, as christianity spread through the roman empire it had some effects that were both good and bad not everybody converted uh, even though it became, you know, more popular, uh, you know, cr- it, it's kind of like today. You you have cultural Christians, even in America, who who will say the words and believe certain things, but they don't actually confess Christ. Absolutely. Um, so so certainly that happens in every day and age. Uh, there's a number of problems, uh, which I've kind of already been alluding to with this, the Soul Invictus. Num- number one is um, there were actually more popular feasts for uh, the Sol Invictus cult in in the Roman world than December 25th. So you had a couple in August. I think it was August 8th and 9th, August 28th. You had a big festival in October 19th to the 22nd. So here's the thing. If you want to co-opt, uh, if you really wanted to co-opt a pagan belief, pick pick the bigger deal you know right. what i'm saying <laughs> right. Uh, right now now the you know the problem is to, you could say well there is the the idea of the the shortest day of the year sunwise and then the turning and so so there's the verse in malachi about the rising of, of the sun which is a prophecy of christ's son s-u-n so some have tried to make that connection i don't i don't think it really flies the, the second reason i don't think it really flies is all of the evidence that we have for this being a big feast uh, or an important feast for the soul Invictus comes after some of the early evidence that we have that Christians were celebrating Christmas on on December 25th. So, so the best you can say is these two arise kind of together in in dual streams. It's probably even slightly better uh, to say. And, and one recent dissertation from 2009 that looks at pretty much every, I think it was like every inscription and in temple for Soul Invictus that we have evidence for. He has a a short section where he argues it's probably slightly better to say it may have actually been the pagans co-opting Christmas that was already being celebrated and trying to put their feast on on the same day to kind of kind of be a a rival. Uh, The third thing, and I think this is probably where the December 25th uh, tradition came from. Uh, in, in the early church, they were, of course, trying to figure out the, the day of Christ's uh, death, mm-hmm. uh, which would have been Nisan, I think, 14 or 15. And Nisan you got 14. It, yeah, 14. Thank you. So then you, you flip that to the trying to figure out the by the Roman calendar the, and stuff. Uh, it, it becomes March 25th or April 6th, depending on, on how you calculate it, which is why you have the East versus West controversy over where Christmas is and the death of Christ is. So... Uh, if you go with the March 25th date, right, there was a Jewish tradition uh, that said the date of a prophet's death was the date of his conception. Now, it's not a biblical tradition or, or anything like that, but but it, it was a Jewish tradition. And, and there's some thinking that the early church probably took some of this on in the maybe the late uh, second or third century. It, um so then you count nine. If his conception was March 25th, you count nine months from March 25th. Where does that land you? It lands you on December 25th. Or if you were counting from April 6th, it would land you on January 6th. So so the idea being that may be the reason they picked the birth of Christ uh, as December 25th. There was, you know, there, there was a number of early church fathers that said some other dates like November or some one or two of them looked at the uh looked at some of the references to the conception of john the baptist and and tried to figure out some dates that way uh but but we think uh by the early 300s i think it was there was probably a celebration of christmas on on the 25th particularly in rome um however like i said any evidence for the soul of victus cult celebrating on feast on that day is late 300s uh, at best, I think there was something that's dated to like 350 something, and then there's another reference a little bit, a little bit later than that. So it, you know, we don't have all the evidence that we'd like. It doesn't get as deep as as we'd want. You know, there isn't mounds and mounds of evidence. So we so we want to be careful that we're not uh, uh, over reading uh, the sources that we do have. But I think the basic idea that Christianity is 
the the December twenty fifth date is straight out of paganism, is is just false. Yeah, the fake, fake best news. Yeah, fake, fake news. news. The best you can get is saying there was like some cross pollination going on. But this idea that well they did it first and we just adapted, we stole it from them. We're, so so you know I ran into a guy that came into my church and basically said you you shouldn't be celebrating Christmas because it's a pagan holiday. Like, no, I think you can celebrate Christmas with a clean conscience. There was enough early church people that were celebrating it, not as tied to this Sol Invictus. And and the reality is today, like, who remembers Sol Invictus? It's not like there's, if there were a bunch of people going around worshiping Sol Invictus and this was their holiday today, maybe we would want to rethink things a, a little bit and be careful to, and, and stuff. But it's not, and it wasn't even... In the ancient world, they're the most important holiday for this for this cult. Wasn't yeah. there Puritans that actually canceled it? Yeah, yeah, the Puritans canceled it, but I think they canceled it. And I'm not up on all the Puritans. That was stuff. what made me look into. Okay, the, I think in Boston, it was illegal. The paganism, yeah, I think it, I think it was. It I think was you're right. outlawed. It yeah. was outlawed at one so, point. But in some history. of that, I think, some of that came more from it being a Catholic tradition. Christ a, Mass. Christ's Mass, right? Mm. Uh, and, you know, so the pagans were the pagans. <laughs> the, <laughs> that was not a Freudian slip. The, the Puritans. Oh, man. <laughs> so so when you get into the regulative princ worship principle. In oh, the don't Puritans, get Scott started. Don't get Scott. Be merciful. Be merciful in the comment section. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Scott. Uh, go ahead. So, so some of this, you know, the Puritans were very much about don't celebrate days that aren't in Scripture. Don't add to worship things which is why you get even till today you get some that are singing psalms only right mm. so so it's this idea like you can only do in worship what god has explicitly prescribed said and yeah prescribed right. Right. sometimes they take that i think too far and too literal i think it's it's generally a good principle mm. um but you know there it's it's a principle you know we we see music in scriptures therefore i think we're allowed to write music you know what i'm saying yeah um yeah so so I, th I think it's the same way with Christmas. I, I think, you know, it, you don't have to look for an explicit command, celebrate Christmas or an explicit date in Scripture to to feel like you can you can set aside a day and, and celebrate it. Uh, and, and the scriptures, by the way, um, those of you that are watching um, and even looking over the video uh, comments and everything like that, I did put an article. Uh, that points you to a podcast and the article of information that was helpful to me as studying this topic. Um, it's it just a, a good amount of sources on that link that I put in the comment section. Go ahead and check it out. Naked, Naked Bible podcast. And then also they have an article and sources in there. Did, did they have the touchstone this, article? Because that's a really good one to read. I, I saw believe, you looking that. Up yeah, up yep, early. That's the, yeah, yeah, that's the uh, tu yeah the touchstone one. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's I think that's the one that I read that's a William number of years back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that started me to do a little more a little more digging. Yeah, so that's um, that's that. But as we're going forward, I want to bring up something that you just said. Uh, kind of we're get, what we're getting to, which is Christians have freedom to celebrate these holidays right here. Yeah, I think so. We were talking about this before the show. I, I think the big the big verse is is Romans 14. Now, obviously, that was written in a context with with the Jewish feasts. And, right. And you had uh, the, the Roman church had both uh, Jewish believers and Gentile believers. And so you had, you know, like like in a lot of the early churches, controversy over, you know, can we eat meat? What do we you know, what do we got to do? How strict should we be? And so I think the idea of, of the festivals and the worship c comes up there. And and Paul Paul gives uh, liberty. I don't have the exact verse in front R of me. But Romans 14, right here, where it goes on to talk about, let me see, um, be everything being clean and Yeah, so everything being, being clean, but also uh, talking about, you know, honoring a day unto the Lord according to your conscience, I'm, I'm really not doing a good job even at paraphrasing it. But it is this idea that, that we have freedom uh, to to worship the Lord and celebrate some of these days. Yeah, one one. this is Romans 14, verse 5. One person esteems one day as better there than another. There we go, another, that's the one. As better than another, while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day, observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord since the since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself and none of us dies to himself. 
And I think obviously in the original context, he's talking about Jewish feasts, um, but he's probably would include in there some of the, like the Feast of Hanukkah, which would have been celebrated in Paul's day, but isn't mentioned uh, in, in scripture. Mm. Um, and some have argued that Jesus celebrated that day. And, and when he talks about being in the light in, in John's gospel, some have suggested he said that over over the Feast of Hanukkah, which which is very plausible. Um, but I think I think the bottom line is I think that verse gives us a principle to apply to today. Nothing being unclean within itself. Right. In, a, in and of itself. You know, now, granted, you, you don't walk into a pagan festival and say, well, I'm just going to reappropriate this, <laughs> right? But put in something that is, right. is value uh, neutral. Uh, you should, if you want to honor that day before the Lord, honor it. If you yeah. don't want to honor that, that day, don't honor it. Um, it. You know, let your conscience be the guide. I, I think we would say the same thing with like, you know, with, with a 4th of July celebration. You know, we're not worshiping America when we do 4th of July, but some do. So, some day. We just well, that's about another that. episode. That's uh, <laughs> <laughs> we just talked about you that. Know, but but some people some people feel like you know like look I can celebrate. I'm just saying thank you for my country and and honoring God in that. And other people feel like you know what if I make too big a deal about it, mm-hmm. I'm I'm putting something before God. And and mm. all of us would agree we don't want to put our country before God. We put God first. How you flush some of that out? We're we're allowed to have some liberty and and some personal convictions and. Sometimes it, it depends upon the background that you came out of, you know. Um, yeah. Some people have a very, you know, somebody that comes out of a really hard background, you know, they get saved and they throw away all secular music because they know what that meant to them. Mm-hmm. Other people, you know, they, they search their conscience, they're careful about what they listen to, but, they, but they'll listen to some secular music or the radio or whatever, you know, and, and those are some areas where we do have some liberty of conscience and we shouldn't use the scriptures uh, to bind someone's conscience with a, a rule where scripture doesn't bind the conscience. So I would I would say, you know, make it a personal decision. I, I would give the caution to those of us that celebrate Christmas. Don't just do it because everybody around you is doing it or, well, that's the way I was raised. Like, like are you really celebrating the Lord on this day? Uh, for those that, that don't celebrate Christmas, are you honoring the Lord in doing that, or are you doing it for out of out of selfish motives? Are you doing it because you've bought into uh, conspiracy theories? I, I know people that just wanted to fight over over not celebrating it, and and almost to the point of making it a point of pride that they were more spiritual mm-hmm. for not doing that. And that's not the path that we're supposed to go either. You go yeah. against uh, if you go further in verse nineteen. He says, "So then, let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding." There we go. Yeah. I'm saying it. Yeah. And, and so those people that do that, I've noticed they're not really out to make peace or to really build up the church or one another. Right. It, it, a lot of them are very divisive, you know, with it. And I think that's why Paul's warning uh, <clears throat> here, in a sense, warning uh, the church there to make sure that unity is preserved. Yeah. Over matters that, you know, uh, we should be unified over matters that are essential, but on preferences on what yeah. days we worship and things like that you know what i mean like people make a big deal out of that and we have those freedoms yeah and i had somebody contact yeah. me right before we went live and they were like they were like hey a lot of christians celebrate american holidays why don't we celebrate or at least examine more closely the the biblical ones or the jewish festivals mm-hmm. um it's not a salvation issue but somebody was just hit me up asking me that yeah i i mean i think i think that's a good and, and here again, much like the Christmas controversy, I've seen people kind of go too far either side. OK, mm-hmm. so number one, we should know these festivals. They're in our, our scriptures. They're the Old Testament is our Bible. Uh, but these things ultimately point to Christ and are fulfilled uh, in, in Christ. And, and so I think with the, the Romans 14 and, and the Colossians 2 as mm-hmm. well, we're, we, we aren't obligated anymore to fulfill these. They would fall under or excuse me, to celebrate these, they would fall under uh, the ceremonial law. Uh, I, have a, I have a really good friend that, that his family started a tradition, uh, the Book of Esther with the Feast of Pur- Purim, 
they mm-hmm. celebrate that every year and he he was studying it he he does it as a, a joyous thing he does it kind of also because nobody ever pays attention to that one and <laughs> the book of esther meant something and it became a family tradition for them yeah. and and that's a good thing he does it unto the lord I, I don't think they're you know super strict or legalistic about it but but they've turned it into their own little fun family tradition and and i think that's a a great thing to do the the side of it though that that worries me in in certain strands of evangelicalism so we go from this on the one hand the church doesn't know their old testament which is shameful i've seen people swing out so far the other way Mm. where it's almost like you know we need to do all of the jewish festivals we need to not only Mm. know what they mean and how they point to christ but we need to celebrate them and to the point of almost spiritual pride mm. of the personal conviction that they have in, in celebrating these things. Yeah. Uh, om- almost like, um, you know, like, oh, let's throw out every December 25th, the date of Easter, all those things. Oh, that's all pagan. Using the word Easter is pagan. So throw out all that and only do the Jewish festivals. Well, to that point, I mean, if you're to the point where I've seen some, they're almost going back to the rabbis <laughs> to yeah, understand I started these, looking these holidays the, the, the hebrew roots right yeah there. the hebrew roots yeah. stuff has issues number one uh you know rabbinic judaism developed be, you know when christianity and and judaism split it, it develops in a different track so some of these people are going more in, into some of these jewish roots they're not actually going into good scholarship on the old testament good scholarship on second temple judaism the judaism that jesus would have celebrated uh, and it kind of can become like this this free for all and and people make it a point of pride and almost becomes like a gnostic i have secret knowledge of these festivals because i've studied and know more and look if if you delight in these festivals and how they point to christ you know by all means i'm, I'm not going to tell you you don't pay attention to them obviously and i'm not going to tell you don't celebrate but i i do i've run into people that they get so into the jewish roots movement they, they, it almost gets to a point, and the really extreme versions deny the deity of Christ because they say, well, that's Greek thought. Now, that's mm-hmm. the really, really extreme versions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you do have to be careful for this kind of like sliding scale, this slippery slope kind of thing that, that I've seen some people make it, a, like I've said, a, a real point of pride. I've seen some people, you know, they, they try to get into predicting what season of the year the Lord will return based on these festivals. And they're, they're just not even doing good bible study they get so enamored with with some and it's like anytime somebody says jewish roots they're like a deer in the headlights <laughs> that you're not actually doing hmm. good bible study you're yeah. you're just falling for it because they've said jewish roots and and it kind of becomes a almost like a, a code word I, I, again i'm not a, obviously our our faith is founded in the old testament you yeah. know the the same faith that abraham had is the same faith that we have and and there are a lot of christians that don't know their old testament so i'm i mean i'm a new testament studies guy for my academics but i always loved preaching the old testament sometimes it was just more fun yeah the biblical stories the the narratives the showing how these things point to christ and are fulfilled by christ i mean we should Mm -hmm. read all of scripture as as fulfilled in christ and if you're looking at the feast and doing that then amen you know Mm -hmm absolutely because yeah, they're meant to reflect yeah they're meant to remember yeah right and right it brings you back it tethers you back to what god did exactly his people and that's but but when you exalt them i think over some of the christian calendar days like like you don't want to celebrate easter and you get into you know you, timothy and colossians i mean the first timothy they warn about getting into myths mm. And, and we can get deep into these myths about and endless like, debates and endless debates. Like, are we celebrating it according to the right calendar? Yeah. I mean, that's almost like what the Dead Sea Scrolls uh, fought over. Are we the using Essenes. the lunar car- the Essenes, right? Are we using the Jewish lunar, lunar calendar or the solar calendar? And it, it became well, that's sectarian. What they, they separated from yeah. the others because yeah. of that. Well, and you, you almost have Christians doing that now, becoming sectarian yeah. because it's like you're not doing it right. You're not using the solar calendar or something like that. So you're and then when you like when then, you know, then when you basically say, well, you basically are, are captivated by paganism for doing that. Their, it's like their okay. argument was also that they were following the calendar they follow because it came straight from God too. 
So I yeah, see the yeah. correlation there. Fire calendar. Yeah. Because people were saying the same thing about these Jewish holidays and following ceremonial laws. But anyway, we spent the last half hour laying the foundation for today's episode. So let's move forward with this now. We dealt with the old news, the fake news. Now let's deal with some of the good news. What are some realities of the good news that we find in the incarnation of God's son? So I'll start. I'll start. Let me uh, start off with Isaiah, uh, where I, the Isaiah, Isaiah passage where Jesus is called Emmanuel, which is God with us. So in the good news, we see that God comes to us and we have the presence of God um, with him being here on earth with us. And guess what? Then when he also ascends to, um, to God in heaven, he sends back his Holy Spirit. So he never really left. Right. In essence, with, with between him coming to earth him leaving and sending his Holy Spirit, he's still here. His presence is still felt here. Mm-hmm. So God is with us, his church, with the world. I like that one right there. What we find um, in Jesus coming to earth, wrapped in human flesh. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, he became like us in all things yet without sin. I, I mean, there's there's a beauty to the incarnation and and he didn't just he didn't just come to earth and appear human he wasn't like an in like in the old testament where the angel of the lord shows up and it looks like a human being mm. i mean he comes down in in takes on true human flesh and and the beauty of this which i think just magnifies the the lowly estate that he takes on is coming into the womb of of mary and and taking on uh, true humanity and and her being filled with the Holy Spirit and and conceiving that that it's it's her flesh that he takes on you know her uh, female egg uh, is is being used to go into to the biology I don't I don't think we're wrong uh, to say that and do that it, it's it's not just he created a new body that he stepped into like like he fashioned it out of the dust or something like that it's like he got down into mm-hmm the womb and and you know I'd, i have four daughters and childbirth is messy you know it's <laughs> ugly it's painful right uh so i've been told <laughs> uh, um i, I don't want to mansplain here childbirth. <laughs> but you know like like oh, man. <laughs> christ goes through the birth canal yeah in in his humanity and and there's just mm-hmm. a an awesomeness that as Mary is holding this baby and nursing this baby, this is the one who upholds the universe by the word of his mighty power. Mm-hmm. And and so you have the majesty and the glory, uh, to use John's language in John 1, 14, tabernacling among us. Mm-hmm. True flesh. He gets weak. He gets tired. He would have needed to sleep. I think Jesus in the manger cried when he was hungry, not because of sin, but because of, of humanity. He had, mm-hmm. you know, whatever the Jewish equivalent of diapers were, he had dirty diapers that he needed, you know, dirty like, a, rags. yeah, if, if mom and dad wouldn't have taken care of him, here's the God of the universe that wouldn't have survived yeah. mm-hmm. in, in, uh, in his humanity. So, so there's a, the, the, the Isaiah verse of he had no form that we should be drawn to him. Like, like this is this lowly manger in, uh, baby in this stinky, smelly manger um, that's the God of the universe. And it's just a wonderful, beautiful, powerful thing. And he, and he takes this on so that he can die for us, so that he can rise again from the dead for us, and so that he can stand as our king and high priest as, as one of us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going through the book of Hebrews and, you know what I'm saying, yeah. reading through it. You know something about the uh, book A little bit. <laughs> it's a decent book. <laughs> <laughs> he was tempted. You see that Hebrews 2.18. He suffered and died. Hebrews 2.9. Uh, 5.7, he cries out with loud tears and cries to the one who's able to save him from death. I mean, that just blows amazing, the mind. Man. They're in it, obedience to what he suffered. Yeah, you know yeah. Oh. True, absolute humanity without sacrificing an ounce of his deity and and there's a mystery to that yeah. and and that just you know i think it was athanasius and some of the church fathers had this phrase or maybe it's the cappadocian fathers what's not assumed can't be redeemed meaning he has to take on true humanity or he can't redeem it so if, if he's not assuming and taking on the human nature he can't actually save it 
mm-hmm. not not from within. And and you know we know how atonement needs to work. We know how resurrection needs to. Work. I mean, he has to have true humanity, and that's that's really what we're celebrating at at Christmas. Uh, you know, I mean, Christmas is, in a sense, a messy holiday. It, it's not the cuteness that we make it all out to be. Here's this little baby who cried, and the childbirth, I'm sure, was painful. And, and here's the God of the universe in this lowly, stinky stable um, in a day and age where they didn't have antibiotics and epidurals and nice hospitals. And, and here's the God of the universe coming in to conquer sin and death and triumph over it. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, going through Hebrews again. I'm I'm reminded that the incarnation also uh, brings about his priesthood, like you talked about already. We forget yeah. about yeah. Emph- emphasizing the priesthood of Christ mm-hmm. because of his incarnation. You know, what I'm saying like he's greater than Melchizedek. He's, you know, the great high priest, and what he did, mm-hmm. he did once and for yeah. all. You know, like that's part of the in- incarnation story yeah you know what i'm saying like that's what he came to do and we reap the benefits of right. his priest uh his priesthood not only that too but but when you think of kingship you know obviously god is a king who rules from all eternity right. but but the messianic nature of his kingship the fulfilling the davidic promises mm. i was uh, you know one of my favorite psalms i just was reading it again the other night psalm 89 because it goes through all of these promises given to David and talks about how God is faithful and he keeps his covenant and all these wonderful things. And then right towards the end, it has this really sharp turn. And we think it was written when, when Israel was in exile because it basically says, and where are these promises? There's no king on the throne right now. Mm. When are you going to do this? So it's, so it's almost like, it's almost like, you know how your kids sometimes like butter you up and then they drop mm. the other shoe. Mm. <laughs> uh, and that's sort of, you almost get this sense of like, God, you promised this. Oh, it's so wonderful. And then, it, and then it like the other shoe drops, boom. Why aren't you keeping your promises? Mm. Where are you? And, mm. and it almost becomes a lament in that sense. Mm. And, and Christmas is the God keeps his promises God sends the seed of David to fulfill salvation, to triumph, to be the priest of the order of Melchizedek. Mm. God is the God of covenant faithfulness, and we see it in the manger. Yeah. And, and you see some of that reflected um, in, in Mary's uh, Magnificat, in, in um, uh, Luke, you know, just the, the language, the word Zechariah. Uh, as well when he talks about uh, John the Baptist and his role, but you see him reflecting there on just kind of this messianic moment that it is that, that God himself is showing up. Mm. Yeah. yeah, that's good. I even was looking at Luke 2, and Jesus was confirmed as the Lord by an angel from the Lord. Um, Luke 2, 8, and there were shepherds lying, living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people today in the town of David. A savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Mm. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. So the word of the Lord is confirmed by the angel from the Lord, which is Jesus was going to be the baby that was wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And he is the Messiah, the Lord. Mm. Yeah. And why would you not want to celebrate that? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like, like, really? Like, like, okay, so you don't like December 25th. Fine. Why don't you want to celebrate that? <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. It's beautiful. Pick another day if you don't yeah, like the 25th. Right. Absolutely. You know, um, you know let, let's do it in July. I don't I don't know. Yeah. You know, hey, don't you got better things to do? You know, um, what I'm saying? yeah, yeah. <laughs> really? You want to argue over this? Yeah, yeah. Some people don't have better things to do, but uh, <laughs> they really don't. They they, they argue. That's why I'm here day. tonight. I didn't yeah. have anything. Better. <laughs> So we're going to argue it. <laughs> One of the things I did say on Sunday, though, too, is uh, I feel like, you know, because I get pushed sometimes, uh, am I going to preach a Christmas message? And I keep telling people, no, I think we do Christmas almost every week. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that pastors can't do that. But to me, it's like uh, the holidays don't really rev up in me, uh, you know, the gospel or the birth 
of Christ. You know what I mean? It, of course, I, I, I see it. I see, you know, I see it in the culture. But, you know, the life I live as a believer, I don't know. It's it's not that it's not special, but it's special every week for me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Christmas is just like, OK, cool. You know, like the world is emphasizing that and some believers are now. But for me, it's like. Uh, so you're one of them dudes that are like. I don't need a I don't need Valentine's Day to tell me when to love my lady. I can love her all, <laughs> oh. all year round, right? Is right? Lynette on? Where's Lynette? <laughs> right? <laughs> Wayne, we gotta talk about this. <laughs> we gotta talk about this. <laughs> Is she on? I'm looking at the comment section. <laughs> um no, nah, I feel yeah, it though. I yeah. feel it. I feel it. Hey, After every that, day. But yeah, I, and again, I'm not saying that pastors or churches can't emphasize that. It's just for me personally, I don't feel like it's a special season for me. Because you know, for me, it's an emphasis every week. You know. Yeah, you, you know, know you, I, mean? I don't know when you want to transit. You wanted to talk about at one point the the way the culture takes Christmas and the commercialization of it, and and I do think there's, you know, I, I hear what you're saying, and there there's a good point to that, like. The things that we do, just like you guys do communion every week at, at Christ alone because you're celebrating Christ's death. And, you know, all of that is predicated on his birth, too. So so these aren't things that we should just bring up at, at December 25th. You know, I think there's an, with the culture, there's an apologetic moment. You know, do you know the re real reason for the season? That that kind of, mm. right. you know, that's a cliche, but but it is it is in the it is a good thing to, to use, I, I think, at times. Sure. But but yeah, that being said, like if you only talk about his birth in the month of December, like if you're not remembering the incarnation throughout the year and that in the fullness of time, he was born of the woman <laughs> born of under Some the law. Some churches might be doing you're, it you're, just right, on Christmas. Right. It's then like, then you're probably yeah. not doing it right either. You know? <laughs> like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, can't yeah. preach this passage. Got to wait right. till December. All that's that's the, similar yeah, to talk waiting born. to talk about the resurrection around Easter time. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Don't get me started on that soapbox. Yeah. Come, yeah. On. <laughs> Come on. Come on. I think that mistake could be made on, on on that end, you know, where you're only celebrating. Yeah, sure. The Christ yeah. at Christmas. You know, yeah. I expect a lot, a lot of every month. So I want to celebrate Christmas every month. It, it's just normal <laughs> for a lot of unbelievers too to visit, you know, church during yeah. Christmas and Easter. You know, yeah. it's like it's in the well, air. And I think the danger, too, is that the church can get caught up into the trappings of Christmas. And, and there's nothing wrong with, you know, Christmas caroling. And we do a Christmas tree lighting at, at my church where we just invite the neighbors and we we give them cookies and hang out and it's just kind of meet the community kind of thing. Yeah. However, you know, like, like there are churches that, that make their whole year calendar year seeker sensitive. And so it's always mm -hmm. what's going on in the culture and how can we use that? And it becomes like a bait and switch to get people in, uh, you know, mm -hmm. summer, you do your movies series based on the hot movies that are out that summer, you know, and it, and it's like, if that's how you treat Christmas, like we're going to just do this because it's a hot button issue that everybody's talking about right now, then you're not doing a service to mm -hmm. to the regular proclamation of the gospel and the good news that that Christmas is is foundational to understanding what's good about the good news. Yeah. 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 You touch on, I guess, the next topic we will be getting into, which is um, the bad news, the bad news of this time of the year. So, you you know. Credit card um, debt. No, I don't. Know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all the sadness, depression, suicide rates, all of that stuff goes up. Um, the debt goes up. Um, well, and I think, you know, Christmas holidays are hard for people that have suffered loss. Mm -hmm. People that have been through. I could imagine dying, this year. I just divorces. had a. Yeah, I had a friend of mine at work who just lost his mother-in-law uh, yesterday. Yeah. And now that's going to be at that time of the year every year yeah. for them. And, you know, that's that's difficult. That's painful. You know what I mean? And, and even but even if you lost somebody in in March, you mm -hmm. know you always remember, especially the first. You wish they seasons, were there. You wish they were there. Yeah, man. You know it, it's a yeah. good reminder. Uh, the scriptures say, you know, rejoice with those who are rejoicing, weep with those who are weeping. Don't mm -hmm. get so whatever the celebration is, but especially Christmas, don't get so caught up in in celebrating or having a party that you that you don't notice people around you that that are hurting mm. you know and and even in your celebrations you know there's nothing wrong with joy there's nothing wrong with happiness uh there's nothing wrong with throwing a party but but at the same time don't do it 
in ways that are callous. Don't use it as a means of covering hurt, whether in your own life or in, in the lives of other people. Mm. Like, I think, I think it's good to be self-aware in, in the season. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. good. Yeah. Cause again, this is that, you know, the reason for the season and it ends up, you know, amounting to consumerism, materialism. And this year too, with just real quick, before you go into the consumerism with COVID, mm. You know, there's a lot of families that aren't able to get together. There's a lot of single people yeah. that because of the restrictions can't travel yes. or don't want to risk travel. So that like celebrating at Christmas by yourself home alone. I mean, that is hard. If you know somebody in your church like that, man, like give them a call on Christmas, text them, uh, you know, FaceTime with them, Zoom with them, whatever. Do something to just show you're thinking about them and, and be present with them. And, and mm. even if you can't be physically present uh, or you don't want to r- take that risk, you know, just do something nice uh, that yeah. you remember them and yeah. and do it in the name of the Lord. Do it in, in a way that honors God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. But consumerism, you wanted to kind of. I mean, I route. just wanted to kind of just touch on that. Just the fact that that's what it ends up a lot of times being um, all about consumerism and materialism. Um, I'm sure that. The income in our households have gone down this year, yet the spending probably has gone up. I, I you know, I'm expecting my stimulus check, so I bought Christmas oh, presents. Yeah. Right. I'm just kidding. That's right, man. Yeah. That's what it's for. <laughs> I'm stimulating the economy. I saw, I saw, <laughs> I saw, I saw someone, uh, it, it, it was a meme. It was saying, um, oh, man, it said, uh, it was it showed a meme of a guy before the 600 when he went to the store and he's 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 at the I guess he's at the restaurant and he's like no 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 I'm good take that off take that off take that off and then it says after the 600 he's like you know what put the guacamole on <laughs> <laughs> Hey so here's a here's a question yeah. maybe for you guys what what is something that you do or or that you think people can do on Christmas day with their family to really I know the cliche, remember the reason for the season, but, but to really, let's just assume we're, I'm assuming we're all celebrating Christmas, but how do you do it to avoid (laughs) the hype and just, oh yeah, it's just a bunch of fun presents and, and how do you keep, keep the focus to where we think that it should be? I think one of the things that we started doing since we planted the church um, in the city is, uh, and having the center on North Plum Street in the city, Christmas Day, uh, you know, me, our kids, and some people in our church, we hand out gifts to the community, you know, and there are some families that are in need, you know, there's a lot of uh, people that, uh, a lot of refugees in that part of the city who are barely making it, so uh, there are some families that come in and we're able to give them quality gifts that churches donate Um, So if you want to come out to something like that, you know, I'm saying that that's a way of giving back and that's a way of even ministering to them. You know, we'll share the gospel with them. We'll have conversations, tell them about the church. Um, That's the way we do it, you know, and and because it's real easy to stay home, you know, and play with the things that you got now and and to be, you know, within yourself. But I think that helps us to really focus on why we're here, you know. Uh, to minister to others and to be a light, you know what I'm saying? So, um, because I think it's it's very easy to stay home and to look at the things we got and to eat good food and all that. And, you know, that's cool. But I think to give back, it, it just it's just good to be the hands and feet out there, and yeah. especially on that day. Um, so that's just a way uh, that we do it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, this is, like I said, this is one of those things where I think this is the first christmas and years that i can say that i'm finally not like hardcore against christmas so what i've done in the past is try to look for people that needed help um and i still can i still plan on doing that but it's hard it's hard for me when it comes to this holiday or so uh you know when it comes to this uh because of the fact that i always looked at it as an evil thing and it's been years now that I've been looking at as an evil thing. So I've been trying, I I always was trying to figure out like, do I redeem this holiday or do I just straight up ignore it and just ah, have nothing to do with it? Not, you know, not do anything on December 25th. 
um to show that i'm opposed to it so um this is Say new that you're me, getting man. on your your puritan you know, just, I really you know, did. I really school. did study the, you, you know, the, no, with the Puritans good. and like, you know, I was really hardcore against it. I believed, you know, at one point before my eschatology changed around, I believed it was the mark of the beast and whatever <laughs> they were teaching. I was, I was eating. I was eating it up. And um, I even, I think there's a website out there called Christmas Is a Lie or something like that, or Christmas Is a Lie dot com that I would go to all the time and study it and. Then, 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 then you start seeing, you know, I started seeing a trend is that these people were just not the Puritans so much, but just people that consume, you know, allow themselves to be consumed with looking at pagan roots of everything and trying to expose just every little thing. I started seeing a trend that they were just unhappy people and they were sticklers and they were. Um, There's a there can be a, a legalistic spirit about it. Um, yes. and, and these people That's that exactly. there, there can be this arrogant intellectualism yes uh, and and really you know they start delving into scholarship that's not good scholarship but they get prideful about the way that they use it again yeah. like I've got this this secret knowledge and and you know frankly and I told you a story before the show started you know people can come into the church and, and be divisive yeah. about it now I'm not saying that's where you were um, but but that's really antithetical to the gospel and to the struct the instructions that we have in the early church when we see them the church is disagreeing over holidays or meat sacrifice to idols or all of those mm. things or Colossians with the asceticism and, and the certain days and getting caught up into that um, so so you can you know if you feel convictions about not celebrating Christmas do that to the glory of God but don't use it to throw a stumbling stone in front of other other believers and mm -hmm. you know we had a guy come into our church and was he was fit to be tied that we had a very casual low-key uh christmas tree in in the fellowship hall and we would give out uh gifts to to the kids and particularly those people in needs and we're just trying to you know do something nice we often had a fellowship meal not on christmas day but usually like right around it like the sunday before or after and you know, it, it, it just got to the point where this person in particular wanted to fight about every doctrine. And and he was very much into the, that Jewish roots movement. And so he was he had this spirit of I'm going to tell you why you're doing it wrong and, mm -hmm. and you got to do it my way. And and I mean, he was just beyond divisive. It, it, that's an over critical stuff. spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you're right. Like he he had all kinds of other problems going on mm -hmm. in his life and his marriage and you know like and it was like buddy these are the things you're fighting about like yeah. it yeah. was a distraction it was a deflection because then he wasn't wrong and didn't have to admit i think that's what paul was concerned with in romans 14. yeah those yeah. types and yeah. Things, yeah you know trying to make sure that we pursue what makes for peace yeah you know and uh it, it, at least for with matters that aren't essential sure and they, they make them essential you know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't know what it looks like going forward. Um, 100% I don't know what it looks like going forward. But I do know that I'm going to I'm, I'm going to brainstorm for the next few months until the next Christmas and start thinking of ways to to really stay away from the consumerism, materialism, yeah. and at the same time celebrate the holiday for what it truly should be. So to answer your question, that's I think my yeah. goal going forward is going to be that right there. I'm still going to obviously still look for people to help, still look for people to bless anyone that's around me that knows me. They can always reach out and tell me if they need help. Um, but I think I know which ones are needy and I have been trying to help. So, yeah, that's awesome. You know, just a real practical thing, I think, to, you know, uh, rather than just first thing in the morning, diving into the presence or, or just going from presence to food or whatever, you know, taking some time and, talking to the family or whatever about what you're thankful for reading a little bit of the christmas story you know, you know sometimes with younger kids it's hard it's hard to do it first thing in the morning because they're up at the crack of dawn and they're jumping on your bed and they, they want to get you out and, <laughs> and so they're excited for that so it's a little hard sometimes to rein them in but you know so i'm not i'm not mandating a time that you have to do it but i mean taking a moment and like walking some of that consumerism back and being like hey you know why do we sell it almost like w what we do on thanksgiving uh, you know you challenge the kids like okay what's one thing you're thankful for when i was a kid growing up we always read psalm 100 on thanksgiving i, yeah. I forget what we did on on christmas but it was like we did something 
on both of those days to avoid just stuffing ourselves with food or getting you know into the presence or uh, you know like some people run around like a chicken with their head cut off on christmas between doing their own doing the meal run into a grandparent run into another grandparent and it's like do you actually take time during the day to think about christ and and, yeah. and thank him for his birth and remember like if you're going to make this a day of celebration are you really celebrating christ or are you celebrating just your own gifts and money and if, if that's what your christmas is about maybe you should just do it on another day like make the child's birthday a bigger deal buy them more presents then than, than you do on christmas I, i'm not trying to tell you how to do it i'm just trying to say like yeah. do it and do it in the right in the right spirit we used to give our kids each three gifts you know to kind of take it back uh, and we used to read them the story of the three trees. Okay. Uh, my wife used to read that all the time. It was a gospel story. Um, so there were things we did. Um, and we also randomly would go out and do just some random, like, acts of service. I don't want to get mm -hmm. into details, but we would go out as a family and do things together that didn't have to do with getting. They had to do with giving. You know, I, um, yeah, I, I want to center the Christmas season next year on that. That's my goal. Yeah. But I, I want to look at creative ways to do it in ways that, you know, as I'm starting to change these traditions within my family, how can I do it in a way that doesn't make them turned off by this as well? Hmm. Because it is countercultural to, to, to really take the Christmas season seriously. It's countercultural. Mm -hmm. Um and in everything, we're supposed to be that way when it comes to, you know, and when it comes to either being countercultural or just compromising, we're, we're most likely supposed to be countercultural in that way. Um, then to just give in to the evils that I believe are, we see a lot, you know, happen a lot of times in, in this time of the year. So, yeah, I mean, let's be honest. There are a lot of people that are secular that celebrate Christmas. Absolutely. You know, uh, maybe Nothing they're to atheists, do with Jesus. maybe they believe in God, but but they're not and and we don't want like if, if we're gonna sit here and defend that it wasn't originating because of soul invictus then we we also don't want it to be taken captive uh by today's culture and and yeah. the anti-godliness and and mm. you know paul says straight up that greed is idolatry so so are we letting it being taken over by a, a new kind of of idolatry like what's the point of doing the good historical scholarship to defend the day if we just give away the rest of it by the actual way that we celebrate or the the worldly ways we get we get sucked into mm. uh you know it's and, and it's not just about presence that you give or don't give it it's about an ethos an ethos a, a mindset uh yeah. you know are, are you just are you wrapped up in the moment because everybody else is yeah. and the world around you is pushing it and the lights and the you know the whatever's it's having like a, a, a biblical conviction or culture you know what i'm saying right, like right. It, it's 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 should exude out of you you yeah. know the gospel the reason why we're actually doing this um and by the way i didn't mean that i was against christmas lights you know like <laughs> christians no, can have yeah, fun but yeah, but it's like yeah. what it, whatever you do do all for the glory is of there God. intent you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's important. My wife was very, very good at that. You know, always kept us on being intent about the details of Christmas, you know. Um, and uh, we were. That's what we did. Um, and so, yeah, I, I did see a funny video, though, that uh, a, a dad bought uh, his son's a, a PlayStation. But when he opened it up, it, it, it was packed with books. <laughs> 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 you should have seen their face, bro. And he was laughing away. That's, and that's the, the equivalent of getting a piece of coal. For yeah. Listen, man. The Wait kids, a minute. Whoa, kids, whoa, whoa. In today's culture. Now, I would love that. Okay. I, I, say, love I, that. I want the books. No, no. I'm <laughs> talking about to, to some of these kids oh, today. Yeah. Oh, Listen, yeah. Bro, they were in shock. Like, they couldn't believe it. They were all happy. They were wrestling over the box and everything. And they opened it up and there was books in it. And he had a 
Yeah, I was just like, oh, that ain't so where right. did he get the box from, though? Like, <laughs> I know. Did, did he buy a real PlayStation? I, I don't know what he did. <laughs> no, that was th- see, you saw that on the video behind the, behind the scenes. He bought them books and he bought them he the PlayStation. Yeah, yeah, probably took the PlayStation out of the box. Maybe, just to maybe he them. donated the PlayStation. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> that would be even worse. That would be even worse. Right. Hey, kids, we're taking this down to the rescue yeah. shelter. <laughs> <laughs> Donating it to the human fund. <laughs> That's a good uh, Christmas illustration right yeah, there. Yeah. Sacrifice. The Lord yeah, gave yeah. his best, yeah, so we're so going to we go. <laughs> oh, man. That's nuts. Bro, I lost it when I saw that kid's face. Bro. So here's a thought. Um, I was looking at jolly old St. Nick, the real, the real guy, St. Yeah. Nicholas. And, you know, he was known for there, – there, first of all, let me start this off by saying there's a lot of folklore. There's a lot of, like – So there's the folklore that, that he punched uh, Arius at the Council of Nicaea. It probably didn't happen, but it's a fun story to think about. So it didn't happen? That's – yeah, I think the earliest testimony we have of that is, like, Middle Ages. Mm, so we're pretty sure oh that gosh. didn't happen. I think he backhanded The Dark him. Ages. Punch him. Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I was just going to bring up, you know, he was known for becoming a bishop by the age of 30. I'm 31. So he was a bishop by the time he was 30. Um, And he was known for being extremely generous in his giving and caring for the less fortunate and zealously faithful to the Lordship of Jesus to the point where he would even get locked up for his faith. Um, Yeah. And he was on, you know, the whole Arian controversy, Arians believing that Jesus wasn't uh, truly God. Uh, he 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 did side on the correct side of that, so he was yeah, he was at the Nicene Council, right? He was a contemporary of Athanasius, who's more famous for for defending the deity of Christ. Um, mm-hmm. But he would have Saint Nicholas. Um, he would he was on that side of it. So so you have this, you know, what we know of him. You have this beautiful uh, union of somebody who's orthodox in their faith. But also in their practice, they're loving, they're kind, they're caring, they're giving gifts right. uh, to the poor, to the needy. I mean, it's it's a wonderful, yeah. uh, the real person, I think, is, is somebody that we should teach our kids about even and, and tell them yeah. what's good uh, about about him and yeah. that he's not a, a, you know, a jolly old fat man up in <laughs> the North Pole. That, yeah. That, even, that's even something I do, th- you know, I do think we lose when we don't realize the real St. Nicholas was orthodox right. and, and Christian. Even Santa Claus got to bow down to Jesus. There you go. There you yeah. go. So here's a here's a quote by him. And this is after this quote, then we can conclude at that point. I see what time it's getting. Um, someone said, wait, is there scripture So scripture? I thought I heard a scripture. Um, I'm just reading the comments. She said she thought she had her scripture. Um, no, but I'm about to give you a quote. So St. Nicholas, um, he's he's they say this is his quote. Um, again, with his life, there's so much folklore. I'm kind of I really got to look into it, you know, but this is a quote by that's attributed to him. The giver of every good and perfect gift has called upon us to mimic his giving by grace through faith. And this is not of ourselves. So St. Nicholas holding to the fact that because God is the giver of every good and perfect gift, then we are supposed to mimic that as well in our, in the ways that we display grace and the ways that we display our faith. And and this doesn't come from us naturally, only supernaturally can these things come from us. Um, actually being imitators of the greatest giver ever. Amen. So anyway, um, let's conclude because this episode's called joy to the world which of course brings to memory the song. Um, And I thought to myself, I don't know if this is looked at universally as the great news, right? I call this the not so great news. We dealt with the old news. We dealt with the fake news. We dealt with the good news. We dealt with um, the bad news. And I think at this point we got to deal with the not so great news. Um, Jesus coming to earth I don't think it was good news for everyone, but it was good news to the world. Right. Um, John three sixteen through 18 for God. So loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Now, that is absolutely the good news. But this is what I mean by this is the not so great news. Verse 18. Whoever believes in him 
is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only son of God. Hmm. And knowing this, it should enlighten us and should convict us and it should motivate us to keep on preaching the gospel and, and, and really to, 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 to work, to, to do as much as we can to advance the kingdom of God and to reach the lost. So, amen. Um, anything else you guys want to conclude with? I know I kind of just brought the energy down a little bit, but <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I was just looking again at, at Luke one sixty seven through 76, Zechariah given, given a prophecy by the Holy spirit over Jesus. You know, blessed be the, Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. And he, and he goes on talking about raising up the horn in the house of the servant of David. Uh, but he ends it with, because of the tender mercy of our God, whereby the sunrise shall visit us from on high to give light to those who sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. I mean, he really is the Prince of Peace and, and in his coming. Absolutely. And, and sure, he he puts all things under his feet mm -hmm. that means enemies will be be trampled mm -hmm. uh, but for those of us that that know him he is he is the prince of peace come um to to save and redeem and mm -hmm. and save out of the the manifold promises of of god it, it really is a, a beautiful thing that that all these things that that came about were promised beforehand absolutely hmm. how about you los um Joy to the world. I mean, you know, I, to me, uh, I'm always reminded of Christ, who is our joy and our peace and mm -hmm. our everything. Um, uh, honestly, like my struggle um, at times is to really believe I should be to really believe that I should be joyful. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. sometimes life doesn't feel joyful right you know, it doesn't feel good um but when i think of the gospel and i think of what he's done um when i think of the fact that he was born that he lived a sinless life he died resurrected and sits at the right hand of god and um when i think of the gospel um it te it tethers me back to the the fact and the truth that um he's given his only son so that i could be a son mm -hmm. um so in the midst of all the, you know, what's going on in our world, especially around this season, for those who have had losses in your family, who are lonely, who are uh, really going through it, um, I just want you to know um, that there's a joy. Jesus brought salvation through his own blood, through his own body being broken for us. And uh, because we're saved, um, and we believe that he's overcome the world we could take heart and uh so salvation reminds us to be joyful over the gift that he's given us through his son um to make us sons and daughters of of god and so if you're going through it this season and you know whatever the case is financially whether you're unemployed or you know you got a rough this year um uh god is there with you um and just remember to trust in him, to take joy and delight in him. So I work really hard to do that because uh, I'm naturally a very negative person. Um, I'm an introvert and uh, I can easily see things that are negative and wrong. But when I look at the gospel, I remember what's right, I remember what's good, what's lovely, what's beautiful. Um, and so just remember, mm -hmm. sing a good song. Worship the Lord in yeah. this season. He's good. Yeah. And and on, and on a more positive note, the 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 Jesus coming to earth, the good the, the good news and all of that, it just means the inclusion of the Gentiles as well. Like yeah. that's a great thing. Yeah. Um that's forgiveness and reconciliation with God and his enemies. Mm -hmm. Those who did not know him became mm -hmm. his people. Amen. And it's it's just a great message. It's a great message. And this time of the year should be a great reminder that salvation is for the whole world. 
and it's not just for a select ethnic group yeah amen yeah so anyway y'all um i think we'll get out of here this was a edifying episode um encouraging this was a little bit transparent too um yeah it's always good to have tim on thanks it's always good to be here i enjoy it yes and 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 informative as well that 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 type of episode too i just remember we spent the first half hour giving a a lot of good information that is probably going to answer some questions about this holiday that's good so thanks again guys um thanks for having me yeah absolutely this was another great episode episode 76 of the basement joy to the world los you want to give them the plugs and the shout outs before we head out of here yeah sure uh make sure you go to the website wrathandgrace.com where you can also uh again go get get some really dope resources to our ministry and some events and some conferences that are coming up uh particularly with Vodi bakum uh coming back to the states uh definitely support him if he's in your area wrathandgrace.com is where you can go to find out what's going on uh facebook.com slash group slash the basement is our group page where you can go and actually um you know be a part of the discussion and also uh, even the questions that were asked uh previous to uh the episodes that we go on live uh one week we do go on live wednesday and then the week after thursday and so i believe next week uh i guess we'll figure it out right i think i think we're gonna air next week the episode um that we did on the gospel and race okay part two Definitely. because that'll start another chapter we'll go forward with the gospel and race and then go forward with social justice hmm. dealing with social justice and hopefully the gospel and justice gospel and righteousness gotcha. depending on who we get on and then after that we conclude the season cool we'll yeah. probably end with the gospel and culture the one we just did the heart of the gospel part two conclude the season with that one yeah that'd be good so we got four episodes left y'all episode 76 <laughs> we got four episodes left of the season so um go ahead and make sure that you're part of our facebook group page so you can um stay tuned in to what we're doing yes and then also our patreon account um we're still going to work on that but definitely if you want to support us uh, patreon.com slash the basement 717 is where you can go um and so we appreciate you nevada i gotta give you a shout out sis you uh have been in the comments section killing it yeah and uh, she said and something Scott. important she said growth on every episode even when we don't see it the way we think we should mm. and i i agree with that every yeah. episode i feel like God is showing me something new. Yeah, that's good. And uh, Scott Crawford, of course, you already know. Even though you're wrong on your eschatology, <laughs> brother, I got you. I got you, bro. You're my dude, though. You're my dude. Um, and he said, uh, "Tim, going after the Puritans, though." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and Cindy, uh, I see you. Uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, definitely want to give you a shout out and for staying with us all the way to the end. Travis, what's up? Um, trying to look for some other people here. Lewis, what's up, Lewis? Yo, we got a conference coming up. If you guys are on the East Coast, it don't even matter. If you live on planet Earth, you need to be at this conference. <laughs> yeah. No, we have limited seating. So me and Wayne are hosting it, and yes, uh, we are. It's going to be exciting. Uh, Vody Bachman friends are going to be there, and we're going to have a dope conversation on Christ greater than culture. Um, I like so. how we started using that term a couple maybe a year or two ago and friends that's that's yeah, just I a mean, way this that's just details. a way of saying we haven't figured it out yet but <laughs> come on man i was trying to you know what I'm saying like you already know friends. i'm just laughing because i see it everywhere i go it's like so and so and friends it's yeah, like yeah, so we like, haven't just, booked the rest yeah, but, yeah. <laughs> the and friends yet, but yo, and friends uh, yeah <laughs> But definitely shout out to y'all who have stuck with us. Raymond Bertolette. I can't even say your last name. Um, That's your dad. Yep. Uh, He was on. Kent was on. Kevin, what's up? Uh, And so, yes, uh, definitely keep us in prayer. Uh, Juan Simo, what's up? Uh, That's uh, I haven't seen you here before. God bless you. 
anyway we're going to head out here uh grace and peace everybody and continue to pray for our ministry more details about the conference that we got going on it's a wrath and grace conference one day here in the city of lancaster and yes uh scott you can come uh inbox me and we'll yeah. work something out and uh yeah you can uh yeah man you can always chill it's not we'll an eschatology that. conference though right? no it's not <laughs> it's not scott all right so cut it all right grace and peace everybody love y'all all right take care, take care. yep